Hi, honey bunnies. Susan McGarry here. We are going to talk about microwave kilns today and how cool they are and some of the projects you can do in them like fusing and slumping and fire polishing and even raking. So uh, let's get started. There's several different brands, so I'm not promoting any one brand, but they all seem to be pretty much the same. They do come in different sizes. The larger the microwave kiln you use, the longer it will take to fuse, but you can do bigger projects. But they all fit in standard microwaves. The biggest difference is the microwave that you use. Um, you'll see mine, and I paid $5 for it, I think, or maybe free, I'm not sure. And it takes a little while to heat up. So if I was doing microwave fusing on a regular basis, I would get a stronger watt uh, microwave. In these little kilns, you can do uh, glass, precious metal clay, enameling, glazed ceramics, or, you know, just, just about anything um, that requires a kiln. Just they have to be small projects. You want to make sure that you have safety goggles for sure. You're getting down close to the to the glass when it's hot and you want to protect your eyes. Even better ones if you have them. Um, also a mask, just something to protect your your lungs because you are working with some fiber paper. Um, I I also use welding gloves. Uh, just That just happened to be what I had, but there's Kevlar gloves. There's all types of gloves out there, um, but something to protect your hands. I, I think even at the very minimum, the of glove, just something to protect your hands. The lid has a coating on the inside that intensifies the microwaves. And so that's the key. This is the base of it. And this is really where you're doing your fusing. So your projects can't be any bigger than that working area right there. When you're fusing glass, you can use sheet glass, fritz, paints, decals, fusible paper, bottle glass, recycled glass. Um, you can test glass that strikes. And that has been the main reason that I've used it. And so if I find a little piece of that and I'm not sure what it is, I can run a little test. And when I fire it, it comes up orange. So it's a real quick test for me. And that's primarily what I use my little microwave kiln is testing little pieces. Some people take out the turntable. Some people leave in the turntable. I think that's really up to you. If you leave the turntable in and your microwave kiln is spinning and you've got a delicate project in there, there's a chance of it shaking free and, and, and knocking off. In a 1400 watt kiln, it takes about oh, I don't know, maybe 10 minutes to full fuse something. In my little microwave, it takes about 20. It takes a while. So like I said, if I were to do a lot of this, I would get a stronger microwave. Um, so pick the kiln that works for you. Pick the microwave that works for you and uh, get started. You're going to need a tile. Anything that, that um, is heat resistant will work because when you take your kiln out of the microwave, You'll want to set it on that heat resistant surface. Also, after you're done microwaving, you're going to want to leave your microwave door open. Um, it releases the heat in your microwave because heat's going to build up in there. So let's see some things that you can that you can fuse in your microwave kiln. So one thing, and the cheapest thing out there, of course, is bottle glass. And I just took this to my wet tile saw and cut the neck of it off and got this little ring. And so all you need to do is put something on the base of your kiln, like fiber paper. You can kiln wash this ahead of time if you want. Cut those little corners off. You put your little ring of bottle glass, you put your lid on, and you fuse it. Keep in mind, bottle glass is a higher melting temperature. It might take a little longer, but keep a record of everything. When you're done fusing it, you're gonna flip the lid, you're gonna put it on the heat resistant surface, and you'll have something like this. A little bottle bead almost. Kinda of cute. Didn't cost anything except a little time on my tile saw. Fire polishing is something you can do in a, in a microwave kiln, but you can easily over fire it. It kept my glass the same shape that it started, it just shined up the edges. So on the left is what it looks like before firing, and on the right is after firing. See that shine? Another option is fusing, doing a full fuse of glass. You can set two pieces of glass in there, full fuse, 
and end up with a finished pendant. You can also put in a piece of fiber paper to create a channel for your chain later. Now I had a bit of an issue with this. I did another piece, looked just like it started like this, ended like this. And what happened was I heated it up too fast and the glass cracked. But you can see the channel that the fiber paper made. I put clear on the back of this one so you could see the fiber paper channel. But generally you would use black on the back so that you couldn't see the, the cord. But if I was doing fusing regularly in my microwave, I would perfect that firing schedule so that I wasn't going so hot so fast and cracking the glass. Another option is slumping. And I'll tell you, I tried a couple of things with this. I put a little kiln brick there and I put 16th inch fiber paper on top of it. And I thought this will be a nice slumping mold. What happened was the heat built up too quickly, I think because of that brick underneath it, and it cracked. So I thought about that again and I did a little fiber mountain, little teeny one, and I teetered the glass on top of that and let it slump over. But I went a little too hot and ended up with this little this little leg. So again, I'd want to perfect that firing schedule if I was, you know, using my microwave kiln regularly. What if we do combing? So instead of using my papyrus or thin fire paper, I used 16th inch fiber paper, a little, little thicker, and I took little bits of glass, about an eighth of an inch wide, and I cut a little border around it. It doesn't have to be a solid ring, just in case this glass started to flow over. I didn't want it to touch the inside of my kiln. It could damage it. Once this lid is on, it'll hold those pieces in place. I have this little cocktail fork thing that I got at the Dollar Tree. I broke off one of the tines of it and bent the other one over. I can use that as a raking tool. Copper's not the best, but it was something I had in my studio. So I made a little handle, made a little bend, that's something I can rake with, so I'll try both of those. So I'm gonna cut a few more strips. I'll go over to the kiln. Okay, we're over here at the microwave, and I've taken out the turntable and the glass plate that used to be in there, and I put little kiln bricks in here. So I'm gonna put it in, and I'm gonna put the lid on. My little microwave kiln is ready to go. I've also got my tools here. I've got a little stainless steel bowl of water. On my microwave, I can choose the intensity and I've chosen high. And then I'm gonna set this for about 20 minutes. All right, there we go. And then I'll check it. And I wanna be real quick when I check it, close it and keep it going if I need to. Okay, the timer just went off. And I'm gonna peek inside real quick. Let's see if I can do it so you guys can see. Ooh, it looks ready to comb, so here we go. I'm gonna take this lid off. I'm gonna put it on a heat safe tile right below here, and then I'll start combing, and then I'll cover it back up. All right, I'm gonna close it up and heat it up for another five minutes. This. Oh, I like this, it's a nice. Now it's starting to stick and that's because it's getting hot. Um, the tool is, so I'm gonna cool the tool off. Can I leave that? I think this is actually going to be good just the way it is. I'm going to leave that little loop on there. So I'm going to go ahead and set this for five minutes just to flatten it out. And then I'll set it below on the tile to cool. Okay, it's been a few hours since we raked this glass. All right, here's our piece. That's where that, that little um, piece stuck to my tool. And I just let it lay back down and this blue and the green are reacting to each other so I've got that neat black line I like that you need to wash it really well get the fiber off of it and make sure you wear a mask and then you can cut this up into jewelry pieces and fire polish it 
and make sure you keep a really good record of what you're doing so that you can repeat it. Um, so it doesn't take much to get started. It doesn't take up a lot of room. It doesn't take up a lot of electricity. And you can make some wonderful things. So uh, thanks for watching.